Shalom, I'm a pastor. I'm back at you with this truth. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kakodash. I'm going to title this video Michael Jordan was not lukewarm. Now, I did a video entitled, um, which a lot of people didn't watch. The numbers are kind of low. Uh, entitled, um, The Lord Hates a Lukewarm Brother. You know, when you go to, uh, Revelation 3, you can start at 14 and read on down, uh, 15, 16 verse, and even down below that, it speaks about the, the difference between someone that's hot, someone that's cold, and someone that's lukewarm, which is right in the middle. Most High is not dealing with someone that's cold or hot. Anyway, Michael, uh, Michael Jordan um, is a an example of how you're supposed to be when it comes to the truth and I'm just using him and he was hard on uh, his team he used to curse him out a lot of a lot of people you know coming out now that there's a lot of people on his, men on his team that that hated him because he pushed you know he he wanted to uh, he wanted you to be like he was he he was dedicated you know, to uh, winning championships. You know, he would have he would have no he would have nothing less than that. Anyway, there's a video entitled um, "Michael Jordan Real Workout Footage: Mind of a Champion," and you have this guy right here. This guy that looks like an Edomite. He's a strength and conditioning coach. Now, at one point, Jordan didn't really go to the gym and lift weights and all that because he felt that it would it would uh take away from his game and that's what they used to teach so what he did was he talked to this condition coach and he said he'll do it for 30 days and um if you know if it messes up his game you know he he, he won't do it so he gave it a trial he tested it for 30 days because this guy said well this would make you a better uh player and i think it was over the fact that uh Detroit, the Pistons at that time were basically, I guess they were in the heavy into uh, conditioning and they were basically, he used the words bullying them and he said he, went, he didn't want to be bullied no more, like pushed. So he had to build more muscle mass. Uh, and as far as um, muscle mass, that, that not to be a bodybuilder, not to have muscles on top of muscles, but to have strength you know, and, and be conditioned. So he said he'll try it for 30 days. And you know, watch the video. If I remember, I'll put this in the description box. But um, if I don't, the, the title, like I said, is a Michael Jordan Rare Workout Footage, Mind of a Champion. And this was uh, put up uh, January 28, 2011. And um, he said that went from a 30 day workout, working out with this condition coach to 15 years so he stayed doing it because he found out it worked he said I got more strength I'm more powerful and I and and, I, and it didn't change the the way I played the game anyway I want to go and his thing was about champions champions winning championships that's that that was his uh you know in order for you to be the greatest they still talk about I mean, go go to go to uh, Michael Jordan um, plays or whatever, you know. Put Michael Jordan, and you'll see uh, different videos pop up. The stuff that he that he would do, you know, on the court was 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 um, who who said this? I think it was uh, Bird that said, uh, "That's uh, that's not Michael Jordan. That's that's God came down looking like Michael Jordan." That's God came. In other words, if God came down on the earth as a man and played basketball, that's Michael Jordan. So he compared him to God. Now the word, ironically, Michael in the Hebrew, Maya Ka'ala, means God-like or who is like God. God-like. So now I want to go into the scriptures real quick. I'm going to try to read through these. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25. And every man that striveth for the masteries, and what was uh, Jordan striving for? 
championships. That's why he's talked about when when the NBA is when the greats of the NBA come up, a, a, hand, a small handful of names come up. Michael Jordan is one of them. Dr. J is another. Uh, Bill Russell is another. Uh, 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 Lou Alcindor. Now, for you old heads out there, who who's Lou Alcindor? I gave you I gave you his uh, born name, Lou Alcindor. Um, uh, 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 LeBron James, uh, Kobe, Kobe Bryant, um, Shaq. Oh, and there was a thing recently, maybe a month ago. Uh, Kobe made a statement that we would have won a, a hell of a lot more championships if um, of if a Kobe was in shape. So, and Co I mean, if um, if Shaq wasn't in shape, and Shaq is a type of motherfucker that uh, if he don't got to work, he'll go by his you know his size and and his and the skills that he got but he 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 wasn't the type that would be in the gym he wasn't he wasn't as great as uh Michael Jordan there was a reason behind it and that's why Kobe made that statement cuz Kobe was like likened to uh Michael Jordan all right and the apostle Paul said um that y'all that 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 you all um I'm paraphrasing. I can go to it. It's in uh, uh, Hebrews, um, and that you all be under the same uh, uh, diligence. That you all diligent. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. I keep I'm mumbling over the words. Let me let me go to it so I can read it verbatim. I believe it's Hebrews six eleven, if I'm not mistaken. Hebrews six. And eleven. Okay. Okay, Hebrews six and eleven. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. He that endureth to the end the same shall be saved. That twelve verse that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now let me look up the word slothful. Slothful, slothful, no throws. Slow, sluggish, indol indolent, dull, len len languid. I'm just looking at some of these other. I think that's it. Buttman. One one definition is Buttman. You don't want to be a Buttman. Okay, so now let's go go to these scriptures. So you're supposed to be on fire, either be hot or cold. Uh, that's why a lot of guys fall off. That's one reason why a lot of... Now, we understand that there's brothers that are weaker than other brothers. So, the weak brother, you you, you have to, you know, pray to the Father and to, to, to up your spirit. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 9, verse 25, And every man that striveth for the masteries is temperate in all things. In other words... These great men, normally their wives leave them. You know why? Because they don't give too much time to their wives. Oh, what the Apostle Paul said, he, he that have wives be as though ye had none. It says, um, yeah, you check it out. All these great men didn't, didn't have their relationships wasn't all that great. Unless the woman saw the greatness and said, well, I'm going to deal with the fact that he's not with me a lot. You know? 
because he's trying to get great. But most of them, you know, check it out. These sports, these people in sports, these people are on a high level that, that that's dedicated to something. They're, they they have, their relationships are not that good because they're not giving it all to their, to their wives. It says, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25 and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown now Jordan was doing it to get them championships he got a ring he got the money he got more money he got endorsements the great the, the great the great players get the best endorsements you got Jake still buying Jordans and this man and this man been uh, retired for years it says now they that they now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but but we an incorruptible crown, which is a kingdom. Philippians four verse one. Let's see what that says. Therefore, my brother, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast, fast meaning to fasten, to hold on to in the Lord Yahweh by Shemayashai, my dearly beloved. It says, uh, First Thessalonians 2, verse 19, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our power, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, at his coming? Are you going to be there when the Lord comes? Uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up, I'm sorry, I got to go up, I got to, I got to go up a couple of verses. Okay, he says in the second verse, preach the word, uh, be in season, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all so, so long do, suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. So they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Four verse, uh, Second Timothy four verse four, and they shall turn away their ear from the truth, and shall and be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Anything to get this word out. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. A lot of guys fell off, and they're going to they gonna, they gonna get destroyed. You guys have turned your back on the plow. And you don't want to be in a weak situation. You want to build yourself up through the Spirit. It said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, <coughs> which Yahweh, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. If you love the Lord, the ones of you that went back into the world, you don't, lo you don't love the Lord's appearing. You don't appearing. You don't believe that he's going to come back. You don't believe that... Uh, this is Babylon the Great. You don't believe that you're an Israelite. You don't. You don't believe in nothing. You just you go back to the church or whatever the whatever you was into. You go back to that. Then, as you read down, he reads talks about the men that left him. So now let's go back. I just got finished reading Second uh, Timothy four. James 1 verse 12 Blessed is the man that endureth Endure means to make hard Temptation For when he is tried He shall receive the crown of life Which the Lord Yahweh Have promised to them that love him uh, 1 Peter 5 verse 4 And I gotta Let me let me let me let me uh, go a couple of verses up. It says, uh, "I 
Okay. First Peter 5 verse 2. Feed the flock of the Most High, which is among you, taking an over, oversight um, thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over the Most High's heritage, but being end samples to the flock. Now let me break that down before people get uh, simple. Lords, we are lords over you. There's a, there's an order. There's a rank and file. You have the heads of camp. Then you have the second in the command. You have the third in the command. Then you have men under them that are, that are coming up, and um, it's it's the head man and the second in command or whatever. That uh, depending on the size size of your camp, is to keep the others in check. All right, if they're going off or whatever, because that because they were they were in it before you was in it for a reason. It says, uh, neither as being lords over the Most High's heritage, but being end samples to the flock. Now, lords meaning this. You are my men. You're going to go out. I'm not going to go out because I'm your lord. You go out all day. I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I'm over you. I'm a lord over you. Like I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Yohanna. You rarely ever see Yohanna. One time, Yohanna used to be out there all the time, right? When his, when his thing got built up. When was the last time he was out there? I'm just telling the truth. When was the last time he was out there? Because he got the men he put in their minds that, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm second behind you, how shy. I'm over the angels. I'm, I'm the great guy. I'm the great general. And the Lord came to me and said, you that great general that's going to command this great army. And these guys took it hook, line, and sinker. It, it says it, it says you got to you got to go you got to be an end sample. You got to be an end sample. If you a leader, you got to be out there too. Let me look up the word end sample. Hey, they're looking like looking at Captain says I react like he's the real head of the ISUB. I'm just saying. Okay, it says to mark of a stroke or blow, point a figure formed by uh, by a blow or impression impression of a figure or image, the image of of the God, uh, the 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 teaching which embodies the sum and substance of religious and rep and represents it to the mind manner of of writing, the contents and form. Psst. Basically, it means. You go out there along with the men that are under you. You go out, you do the sit downs, and, it, and it's for them to look at you and say, well, he's doing it, and he's a leader, so I got to do it. And that's how leaders are, 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 are born. You come up in rankings. Okay, um, that's what Jethro, Jeff, Jethro told Moses. Make you captains of uh, tens and captains of fifties and captains of hundreds and captains of thousands, and let them deal with those matters. Okay, so uh, it goes on to say, First uh, Peter five verse four, and when the chief shepherd, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, shall appear. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Oh, uh, fifth verse. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another and, and be clothed with humility. For the Most High resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So your leaders... Uh, have a sense of humility with them. They 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 they'll judge matters, but they'll also apply mercy. So that, you know, there's a lot to this thing, man. Okay. Uh, Revelation two verse ten. Fear none of the, those things which, which thou shalt suffer. You know, the guillotines. 
It said the devil, which is Esau, the leader Esau, shall cast some of you in, into prison, uh, that ye may be tried, and ye and ye shall receive tribulation ten days for a certain amount of time. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So there's going to be a point in time where we're going to be tested. And that's right here in uh, Revelation 3, verse 11. I'm going to start from 10. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from... And everybody that fell out the truth, turned it back on the plow, guaranteed if they're still living, they're going to get a, a chip. Guaranteed. They're going to get a chip. They're going to get a microchip. Because you didn't keep the patience of the Lord. You took the took the took a hold to the plow and look it back. It's because because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world, oikomeni, meaning the planet Earth, to try them, test them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, fasten, hold it hard, which is the truth, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You know who's going to get a chip? Uh, Nazariah and I not the former head of GMS Detroit. They both going to get a chip because they bucked up against what the, what the leaders were saying, the elders, and um, they changed everything around, and now they're not even making any more videos. And the, and the ones that came up under them, they're going to take that chip too. It says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power. Okay, so now let's go back. To oh, you know what? Let me go. Let me bring this up real quick. Bear with me for a minute. So Michael, Michael Jordan's mindset was to be the greatest. His thing, his thing was about, uh, you know, you know, his thing was about winning. Bear with me for a minute, boy, boy, oh boy. Wait a minute. Here we go. Trying to bring this thing up. I'm almost there. I just want to read it verbatim. Um, okay, we got it. Uh, Second Ezra two verse forty three forty two. I Ezra saw upon the Mount Zion a great people, um, whom I could not number, and they and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the mid in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stat stature which is our Lord, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns <coughs> and was more exalted. And I was, and I marveled, marveled greatly at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and that's your change in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, around the, the 50 some odd verse, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of the Most High, uh, now are they crowned and receive palms. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is he, is it, that crowneth them, and he giveth them palms in their hands. So he answered and said unto me, 
it is the son of the Most High, which is Yahweh Shai. So they spoke, spoke about, all the prophets spoke about Yahweh Shai before he came on the scene. So they knew that the son of the Most High was going to come, whom they have confessed in the world. How did we confess his, the, the son of the Most High in the world? Through the book. Be, behold, I am, I, am, I am coming to volume of the book that is spoken of me. That's why I always go to Ezekiel third chapter, eat this roll, uh, Revelation the tenth chapter, eat this, eat the little book. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. That's why we out there week at, week in and week out. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord that the Most High thou hast seen. So he had that vision. And he um and, and and he was told to go and tell the people. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom and it's on to the next one.